Fuck, well, welcome back. Is that a enemy? There's nothing I don't know. more thing. I don't know if that was an enemy. Or not. Unbelievably beautiful. This, is, this guy is dancing on the ground right here. Of course, this there's Trent attacking Charlie. Scary. Holy fuck! Did you see that guy's body go flying up in the fucking air? That was crazy. For those of you that want a shooter that's based during the Vietnam War, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam is coming out this Tuesday, May 30th. The original Rising Storm is actually now available for free via the Humble Bundle for the next day or so. Link is in the description if you want to cop that. Anyways, after playing the beta for the new game, it's basically Battlefield Vietnam meets Insurgency. There are massive 64 player battles, but with hardcore elements like lack of HUD, one shot kill headshots, low health, although you do have two bandages, limited respawns, insane recoil, only iron sights, and more. There is also team killing, and not only are the team indicators hard to spot at times like you saw in the first clip, hint, look at the clothing people have on, but when you do shoot enemies, there are no hit markers nor kill confirmations unless you get that elusive headshot. Dink. <laughs> get out of here, son. I love the dink, dude. I, love I really want to somebody. Yeah, yeah, I really want to go. And the kill feed is delayed such that you can't rely on it alone to confirm your kill, so keep firing, assholes! This leads to a much more tactical style of gameplay, which is why I mentioned Insurgency before. However, this game feels much more clunky than either FPS game, as mantling is slow and cumbersome, the guns are very heavy to use, and movement combinations feel sluggish. Also, make sure to count your ammo so you're not stuck shooting blanks like if you jerked off before a date. And I quote, the disappointment shoot, in shoot, your voice. Shoot! What the fuck? Shoot him, Brian! What? Did I not have bullets? <laughs> no, you were out of ammo. <laughs> shoot her! Shoot! I peeked my fucking head up and there's three people running on by. I started clicking on the fucking left mouse button and nothing was happening. After choosing a side like The Rock, you must know your role, which have a set number of players per team, like two machine gunners with an LMG, or one marksman with a sniper rifle, or one commander, which can call in reinforcements like an AC-47 gun run, or napalm strikes, with the rest being relegated to grunts, which have your normal assault rifle selections. Depending upon which team you choose, US or PAVN, determines the weaponry and other beepity bops that you use. There's also the concept of squads, like in Battlefield, with the squad leader having the biggest role. If you're on the US side, you can only spawn on the squad leader, and if you're on the PAVN side, you could build a tunnel, which is kind of like a spawn beacon for your squad to spawn on. You really get the feel of how the Vietnam War was fought, with the differences in items on each side, as the US team gets the superior weaponry, especially for the commander, but the PAVN team must use things like traps, and has the ability to go into areas of the map which are off-limits to the US side in order to get tactical advantages. It is the worst I, I think that was a grenade that just got thrown at me. Hey, I'm gonna be God right damn it! There were three different game modes for the beta. Territories, which is basically rush from battlefield or push from insurgency, where the attacking team must take multiple successive objectives. Try saying that five times fast. Multiple successive objectives, multiple successive objectives, and the defending team must either run out the clock or deplete the reinforcements, which can also happen for your team. Quick, how do you speak in chat? Rick James behind you! Rick James behind you! Yes! There's another one! Oh! Then is Supremacy, which is a twist on Conquest from Battlefield where certain flags have more weight than others, so things like your home flag are only worth one point, meanwhile the middle flags are either worth two or three. Lastly is Skirmish, which is like the game mode of the same name from Insurgency, a Reinforce-esque game mode where there are three objectives for either team to capture with limited respawns and when objectives are captured, the respawns then get reset, which lead to hilarious moments like this. Come on, US guy. He's behind the truck. No, wrong way. Come on, U.S. guy. You see him. You've got to yes, see him. Yes, see, him. see him. Yes! Don't see him. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> If you're someone that enjoys a tactical shooter like Insurgency or Rainbow Six Siege over a twitchy experience and yearn for an authentic Vietnam era game, then I'd recommend it. And if you pre-purchase on Steam right now, you get 25% off of the $30 asking price. This game is more a simulator than Battlefield Bad Company 2's Vietnam expansion, akin to how Verdun compares to Battlefield 1. Verdun is much more a simulation trench warfare. Battlefield 1 is much more a shooter, and they extrapolate elements for the war for the betterment of the gameplay. Crank up the protest songs, although Born on the Bayou plays during the main menu, and get your teamwork on, because you don't want to be standing underneath the nade that your teammate threw. 
Oh, oh run away. God damn it! Oh dear. <laughs> nice fucking. Uh, 